menstrual cycle, there are three phases. These are the follicular phase, where the follicles grow and mature. Ovulation, which is the exact time the egg is released from the follicle. And thirdly, the luteal phase, which is when the body is prepared for a pregnancy through hormonal support. At the time of ovulation, once the mature egg has been released from the follicle, the follicle is then becomes what is known as the corpus luteum cyst. This small but very important structure becomes responsible for estrogen and progesterone production during pregnancy if the released egg is fertilized and pregnancy is achieved. If there is no pregnancy, the corpus luteum degenerates and disappears because it no longer has any role. It kind of sometimes takes time to de degenerate, and this is why some women may see a follicular cyst in an ultrasound, which kind of tends to disappear after a short period of time, and this is perfectly normal. So this is pretty much what happens in a natural conception. The oocyte leaves the follicle, and the follicle becomes a functional hormone-secreting structure. In an IVF treatment, the maturing follicles are removed from the ovaries during the egg retrieval procedure. This means not just the oocytes, but also the follicular structures that carry the oocytes are removed from the ovaries. When embryos are created in the lab and transferred into the uterus, there is no corpus luteum to secrete the necessary hormones. This is why patients are supplemented with additional progesterone until the end of the first trimester. This is when the placenta takes over uh, the progesterone production, so we stop supplementation. So that, in a nutshell, is why external progesterone is given once the follicles have been removed from the ovaries during the oocyte pickup procedure. You're likely to begin using progesterone supplements on the day of your egg collection procedure. These supplements usually come in the form of vaginal gel or tablets. They're taken vaginally in order to increase the local absorption rather than going through the GI tract where they might use their um, bioavailability. After a few days, you'll be required to have a serum progesterone level measurement, and this is ideally done one day before your embryo transfer. If your progesterone level is found to be less than 20 nanograms per ml, you'll be supplemented with more additional progesterone, likely in the form of injections, so that the pregnancy can be supported with ideal levels of progesterone. If you like this information, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thank you.